Elon Musk taking over Twitter has received nothing but criticism, even from celebrities. With new, absurd rules being announced for the site daily, people are exiting the platform and looking for better alternatives. Comedians like Kathy Griffin have found their accounts to be permanently suspended after disobeying his rules. What are the events surrounding Griffin's suspension, and what seems to be the best Twitter alternative? Let's find out about it in this video. First and foremost, what happened with Kathy Griffin? Musk made an announcement saying any accounts impersonating others without clear specifying that they're a parody will be instantly banned from the website. Earlier, they'd give a warning before suspension, but now they have the power to delete your account with no notice. Some people listened, some didn't care, and others decided to test their humor and intentionally change their display names to Elon Musk. Oh, and a sudden change in name from verified accounts would lead them to losing their precious blue tick mark. But we'll get to the check mark fiasco in a bit. Kathy changed her display name to that of the Tesla CEO, along with her profile picture, and started offensively impersonating him. The tweet was something along the lines of sounding like what Redditors like to call an incel, emphasizing females in his life. When we say his, we mean the satirical his from Griffin's account, not the actual Elon. Okay, at this point we're getting confused too. Elon permanently suspended Kathy's account, saying that it was because she was impersonating a comedian. Comedian? Really? With the type of stuff he tweets, Musk is far from being remotely fun. Oh, would you look at that? Our Twitter account just got deleted. How did the American comedian react to her ban? Well, things take a wild turn. Following up with her response. Griffin switched to her Mastodon account, where she coped with losing her Twitter account. Over there, she freely made fun of the now Twitter CEO, mentioning other celebrities criticizing his ownership and promoting the free Kathy hashtag. The wild twist is that the comedian hopped onto her deceased mother's Twitter account to attack Musk some more. You heard that right. She used her dead mother's account for some online beef. A 62-year-old comedian fighting a 51-year-old edgelord billionaire was definitely not on our 2022 bingo cards. We mentioned some other celebrities and accounts criticizing Elon, right? Let's see who's involved in that battle royale. But before that, here's a recap of the new $8 offer. Let's talk about Elon's offer. In mid-2021, Twitter announced a monthly subscription offer called Twitter Blue, which provided cool new features to elevate a user's experience. With the subscription, you could undo tweets, change themes, change icons, and more. The OG Twitter users know how some of these features, like a custom layout, were available back in 2009, before the concept of minimalism hit every single product in the world. This subscription was priced at $5 a month. When Musk bought the website, he made some changes to the offer, from the features to the price. Now a subscription would cost $8 a month, and along with the previous features in Twitter Blue, you get your very own verification tick mark. That's right, even if you're on Stan Twitter obsessing over some K-pop idols, you'll still look like a celebrity doing it. But the rest of the users weren't very much a fan of the new update because of many reasons. For starters, why would we want to pay for something that's free? Also, this sort of demeans the purpose of the tick mark. Official accounts would lose the check if they're not subscribed, and on top of that, the number of scammers and fake accounts would rise at higher rates, which sort of led to his parody verification rule. A tick mark means someone's paying for the site, and people would find an excuse to bully them. We like to call this the NFT phenomenon. Do you have a hexagonal profile picture of a monkey? Get ready to get clowned. Now, for other celebrities facing Musk's wrath. The blue tick mark was weaponized by celebrities with a sense of humor. Kathy Griffin wasn't the only one who was impersonating the new CEO. Sarah Silverman changed her display name and profile picture to that of Elon's and tweeted, I am a freedom of speech absolutist and I eat duty for breakfast every day. Who doesn't love a good doo-doo joke? Her account had been temporarily restricted and was issued a warning. Silverman's account is back to normal now, but her satirical tweet can still be seen. Television actress Valerie Bertinelli did something similar after tweeting some sarcastic remarks about the new verification update. After impersonating the CEO of Tesla, Tesla, she retweeted a series of Democratic tweets and promoted hashtags for the cause. Before she was issued a warning, Bertinelli undid the damage by changing her profile back to normal. As for the criticism of Musk's updated subscription offer, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or more commonly known as AOC, accused Elon of tampering with her account. She also called him out on his $8 plan because accounts would just end up getting bricked down afterward. Hulk actor Mark Ruffalo quoted AOC and agreed with her statement too. All in all, the new ownership is off to a very rocky start. With that in mind, the way we've been accustomed to the platform can change irreversibly. Last but not least, how will this affect Twitter? The fact that people, celebrities and 
included, now have to pay for something that's been free since the dawn of time really messes with everyone's experience. Okay, the dawn of time was a bit of an exaggeration, but Gen Zers grew up with this stuff. Elon has been known to be a rather problematic billionaire with his edgy takes and dank humor. Not everyone is a fan of him and his meddling with everyone's favorite social media platform. The backlash was inevitable. Anything you say against the new owner will instantly get you banned, and this time without warning. Whatever happened to the 14th Amendment? Free speech, anyone? Some of the jokes running around the site are coping with how Twitter is falling to its doom. People are either moving back to Facebook or Tumblr. There's no in-between, except for good old Instagram, of course. But there's a new sheriff in town. And this site is firing up hotter than a Tesla's battery on a hot day. Moving on to Mastodon and its rising accounts. Firstly, what's Mastodon? The site has been active since 2016, but only recently has the number of newcomers increased. The site is basically the closest thing to Twitter you can get. Some differences include a timeline that's updated chronologically instead of algorithmically. Also, the posts are run by different servers from different groups and not one single platform like we're all used to. The iOS app bears a lot of similarities to that of the Bluebird, the plus side being a character limit of 500 and posting of multiple pictures and videos. It's ad-free and there's still room for improvement. Let's just hope we don't get a Mastodon purple anytime soon. Coming up with who's joining the site. Ever since Elon bought Twitter and was crowned CEO, around 230,000 users made new accounts on Mastodon. It now has close to a million active users per month. Sure, these aren't record-breaking numbers, but hey, it's still great progress. Kathy Griffin was one of the few celebrities who joined the site platform along with a few journalists and famous professors. Sarah T. Roberts, an associate professor at UCLA, joined Mastodon because she found that it was popular amongst people in academia. If a few issues are worked on, we could quite possibly be seeing the new Twitter that'll take over the internet. Finishing up, what does the future of social media look like? Mastodon may be a little confusing to work with at first, since the network is mostly server-based and isn't on a single timeline. That may be the only gripe users may have with the site, but they can think of it as something along the lines of a modified Discord. Elon Musk is fighting his own demons on Twitter, the demons being his terrible taste in jokes. Oh, come on. Our backup account is gone too. Two. Anyway, Facebook is doing its own thing, but has been labeled as the place for boomers. Not gonna lie, but that's kind of true. Instagram still stands strong, apart from the recent glitch where random accounts were being suspended without a reason. In an attempt to bring back revenue, Musk's $8 scheme faces heavy criticism from almost every user on the site. The whole freedom of speech agenda is being messed with, and it kind of makes being funny online an issue. Ethan Klein, known as Hee Hee Productions, met a similar fate to the rest. In an attempt to be funny, his account got permanently banned so his fans won't be hearing from him soon. But who cares? We'll still be using Twitter, even if everything around us is on fire. You won't find hilarious tweets that'll have you tear up in public because you need to hold your laughter anywhere else, now will you? If only MySpace was still popular, millennials would have a new home to call their own. And that's all for this video. What are your thoughts on Elon Musk taking over Twitter? Let us know in the comments below. As always, leave a like and hit that subscribe button to see more of our content. See you at the next one.